Whether you agree with it or not, Frank Ocean did perform the other night at Coachella. You know, it wasn't a long performance, he was late, and there were a lot of factors that went into it not being the performance that a lot of people expected, myself included in all of this, and especially a lot of the hiccups that led up to it, obviously that mainly being the YouTube live stream, but when it actually did happen, it left pretty much everyone confused, almost seemingly Frank himself as well. And while what actually happened with the festival and what led up to it for Frank being his his circumstances, you know, wanting to change the set at the last minute, there's a lot of speculation on that. And I hate to waste, you know, my time and energy sitting here pulling apart. OK, you know, he wanted to pull the ice rink out and, and do this and do that. And it's like, yes, I do believe that a lot of these things happened. And. Did he break his ankle? Sure, I don't know. I, I do know that, you know, his PR team is definitely working double time right now. But I think a lot of the last minute changes and things like that, you know, it makes sense, at least to me. Pulling himself off the live stream, you know, that's a decision that makes a lot of sense to me. And I think that, you know, looking at the crowd's response to the show, I think that there is, this is a really big clarifier for, I think a lot of people out there that, you know, celebrities, artists, you know, they're, they're not your puppet, you know, they're not somebody for you to kind of say, oh, well, you should have done this and you should have done that. It's like, you know, Frank Ocean, yes, he did not deliver on the expectations of a Coachella headliner. I think that is a completely fair criticism, but you know, he, he literally told you that there's new music on the way. He's like, I'm not saying there's not a new album. And you know, just that in and of itself, it almost feels like a lot of diehard Frank fans almost get more satisfaction at, um, when figuring things out through like a leak or an interview with somebody that knows Frank and says they heard a song or an album. And even beyond that, this is a quote from the Festival Owl, Owl tweet that I'm sure a lot of you have seen by this point. It says, you know, quote, it just didn't seem like he wanted to be there, but was obligated to be. Everything, including him, fell apart last minute. Don't expect to see any coverage from the festival about the set, something that is unprecedented in the history of Coachella. The relationship is not in a good place right now, end quote. You know, that quote being from, again, somebody that is, is, claims to be an insider at Coachella, the anonymity of all of this, you know, I don't think we're going to get a lot clearer of a, a kind of perspective on this you know i'm sure people that were supposed to be the ice ice skaters and, and things like that people who are supposed to be part of the performance you know i'm sure that they'll come out and say some things but you know i don't think that's going to change you know a lot of people's perception of this being that i think a lot of people are disappointed but i think that their disappointment is not allocated in the right spot speaking directly to the coachella fan base and one that has increasingly i would say exponentially over the years become you know kind of an influencer haven you know that crowd that especially those frank ocean fans you know the same people that may or may not understand the um, satire within super rich kids you know they're the ones consuming that performance they are you know the the audience for that frank didn't want the live stream on youtube you know i personally think that you know that comes from uh, a mix of like artistic integrity and maybe feeling nervous about it and just wanting to keep it to this crowd here but you know it, it led into that and in that you know it's just this crowd you know your biggest diehard fan that can't afford a trip out to california has to sit there and watch on some crappy phone live stream so i think that's where some of that kind of aggression online kind of built up of you know people being incredibly disappointed with it but you know almost hearing it from the people that were there i think that there's sort of this disdain for them of like oh okay well you know you can afford coachella how bad am i gonna feel for you so i think that there's a mix of of feelings and preconceived notions about how people were consuming it what their perspective is in terms of being a frank ocean fan how long have they been a frank ocean fan uh, I, I think that there's a lot of factors that play into that specifically. But, you know, especially, and the reason I bring that up is because at the end of the show, is at least on, you know, shout out Morgan, uh, her live stream I was watching, you could hear people booing. And, you know, this, this isn't the Cannes Film Festival. I didn't know that we were out here booing people at music festivals. Um, but, you know, again, I wasn't there. If I was waiting over an hour, I'm sure that I would feel some type of way about it especially when the exit was so abrupt being, oh, I'm over curfew, I gotta go. But, you know, people booing him. And, and, and it's almost like thinking back at Camp Flogna when Drake came out, but people wanted Frank and they booed Drake. It's like we've we've seen how, you know, potentially ferocious the uh, 
you know, Frank Ocean slash almost odd future fan base can be when it comes to wanting to see their favorite artists that don't exactly like to be in the limelight, Frank Ocean being that artist. And I never expected this to be a clean cut performance with, you know, perfect choreography and everything set up perfectly. Like, no, his his last Coachella set was very purposefully, you know, you know kind of mechanical in the way that it was set up and, and very industrial and, and lots of, you know, things everywhere. It felt like he was almost in his zone in the studio, you know, surrounded by all these different, you know, elaborate instruments, you know, instrumentalists and Obviously, what we got at Coachella Weekend One did not rival that. Did not rival that. Um, I don't think in any sort of capacity. But what I do think needs needs to be shined is the circumstances that led up to this, especially for Frank. He spent a good chunk of the performance talking directly to the audience, saying, talking about his recent hiatus and what he's been through, losing his brother being, I think, the primary thing um, that. Has been weighing on him that that's kind of what i gained from it especially when he was speaking towards him being at coachella in the past with his brother and with taco from odd future and watching ray shremard uh, in the desert but you know it, it was a place that he didn't particularly want to go to because he would get respiratory infections but you know he would always find himself out there with his brother and you know this is kind of the first time that we've heard him speak at length about literally anything not to mention performing in the last like i want to say over five years six years and he is being about as open and transparent as i think any super fan would want their favorite artist to be and that they're not acting as their persona at that time that that is frank ocean speaking to you the listener kind of explaining what's been going on does that make the performance any better? For me, I think it adds uh, some context and some clarity to it. And I think that it uh, makes me empathize with him a little bit more, especially with the YouTube live stream too. And that, you know, this, you know, despite taking the, the biggest stage at, at the biggest music festival, you know, wanting to keep it private and intimate is an understandable thing and something that is totally not out of the blue that has been done before. Um, you know, Cardi once likes to do that too. There's there's plenty of artists out there that don't necessarily want their sets to be live streamed. And they can be asked whether they want it to be live streamed or not. You know, YouTube advertising it, obviously, they're going to do that regardless because they want people on the site. So, you know, the second they get that news set in, they're going to say one thing and then hop off, not talk about it. They don't need to deal with that. Um, but, you know, I understand why Frank wanted to do that. I can really empathize with that. While I understand both sides of the conversation of people obviously wanting more out of it, um, I, I think everyone wanted more out of it, but the people, my, I think where I'm at in understanding the varying circumstances that went into this show, especially with Frank, um, understanding that versus sort of the, oh, you know, this is what we get after all this time. I'm, I'm such a, I'm such a big fan of you. It's like these artists don't owe you anything. I think that's the biggest message here. It's like, at the end of the day, you know, they don't have to to be super nice to you, to be super gracious about all of these things. I know this is like a really, I feel like a hard message for a lot of people to understand. It's like these artists are people and not all people are the greatest people. And I am not speaking about Frank Ocean directly at all. I'm just speaking about, I think, artists and the persona behind their artistry and the marketability of all of that. It's like Frank Ocean is somebody who does not play into that he seems like a really really nice guy and, but at, you know Coachella Sunday night just wasn't the best I think example of that and people assumed a lot of things because of his silence because of people already feeling like they don't know enough about this guy and then oh he's going to you know come an hour late and do all this all this stuff not be prepared it's like you know who, who does he think he is kind of thing and there's a part of me that, that does understand that. And there's another part of me that says, you know, he did technically show up if he was an hour late, but understanding his situation and the, the people that claim to be these huge Frank Ocean fans saying like, oh, I'm, I'm done. Like, this is, I'm, I'm so mad. This is ridiculous. It's like, are you really a really big Frank Ocean fan? If, if you can't at least understand 
you know where he is coming from with this and it while it doesn't make up for the concert itself it adds like i said earlier a lot of context and clarity to it and that's what it did for me but what i will say is if i took myself out to the desert to see him play and and that is what i saw i would definitely be a little bit disappointed and i'm sure i'd have a different perspective on this you know they are going to do what they want to do at the end of the day and i think frank ocean is perfect proof of that uh, more almost more so than anybody else and I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this whole situation because I think there is a lot of important discourse around it, um, the position of an artist, what the um, the dynamics of I think the parasocial relationships that people hold with artists. I think that that is, you know, kind of the center point of this all and something that I'm really interested to see develop from here with Frank Ocean's career. Um, you know, I'm sending my best to Frank, all the fans that went out there. And, you know, ultimately, I, I do just I'm very curious to hear uh, what you guys think about the whole situation. Were you at Coachella? Were you watching from home? And what did you think? But yeah, more videos coming soon, more consistency. I promise. Pinky promise. Thank you. Like and subscribe and have a great day.